Another day, another Payday 2 DLC. Today we got the Wolfpack DLC. If you can get past your post-traumatic stress disorder and remember back to Crimefest 2015, you might remember that at the peak was the Dallas Pack. Two remake heists from the original Payday the Heist game. So that brought us First World Bank and Slaughterhouse. Today we got Counterfeit and Undercover. The two heists which come with Payday the Heist's only DLC, the Wolfpack. In a move that isn't very like Overkill, if you own the original Wolfpack for Payday the Heist, you get Payday 2's Wolfpack for free, which is a very nice change in pace. Otherwise, you still have to buy this pack for the usual $6.99. Undercover is pretty much the same as I remember it back in 2013 when I first played it. Hiding in this rundown building, watching the deal go down between the tax man and the undercover police. You can either choose to interrupt the deal early or wait 3 minutes and board up the rooms you think are going to be key for fighting. So namely the limo, stairwell, the roof and the server room which you'll take the tax man to. There are a few nice things on Undercover that still haven't been put in to other heists, such as boarding up vents, being able to blow up some of the weaker walls in the building, and beating up the tax man. All very enjoyable things to do, but overall nothing groundbreaking. The heist isn't without its flaws, some walls aren't completely solid, so often you'll get hit by enemies behind walls. However, this isn't a problem exclusive to Undercover. Getting the limo on the roof on Deathwish is pretty much the worst thing ever. The sheer number of snipers aimed there is insane. Not to mention they sprinkle a couple of normal blue cops with the snipers so you can't see the lasers. The other locations aren't so bad in comparison. The escape portion isn't as hard as I remember, and I don't think I've ever been downed on the way out. There isn't anything really bad about the heist, in fact I'll say it's above average overall. It is however the lesser of the two heists in this pack, similar to how Birth of Sky was lesser to Beneath the Mountain, that's in my opinion. Counterfeit is where you'll see improvements over the original version. They have completely removed the starting stealth portion where you could get the hack started quietly until the cops figured out because you couldn't answer the phone. A little disappointed that's gone, however it's completely made up for with the additions to the heist. Originally we were stealing printing plates from Mitchell who him and his neighbour set up a counterfeit money printing operation under the pool, which was accessible from both houses. What they have added is printing sheets and printing ink in crates to help immerse the fact that these guys are actually printing counterfeit money. And this is where it gets better. The heist turns into an endurance heist, similar to Cook-Off and Santa's Workshop. Once you have secured the plates, you can either escape or choose to print some counterfeit money. It's such a small addition to the heist that has increased its replayability and appeal while still staying true to its roots. The hack is faster than I remember it to be, however the C4 is still there on the higher difficulties, meaning the pool can explode, which hasn't happened to me yet, however it got pretty close when I turned on the mod that disables outlines but yeah, that was a moment of sheer panic. Another small change I enjoyed was being able to start the hose objective once the drill has been set up. Simultaneous objectives have slowly been getting better and more abundant, so it's pleasant to see that this is going strong. We have 10 heist related achievements, 5 for undercover and 5 for counterfeit. For death wish we have in for a dime, in for a dollar for undercover, and under pressure for counterfeit. For undercover we have the savior, place 10 planks on windows, vents or fences, keep clear of the windows, complete the heist without killing any snipers, blow out, complete using only a grenade or rocket launcher on overkill or above, not even once, complete the heist without anyone getting downed on overkill or above. For counterfeit, we have crowd control. 
keep all civilians as hostages until the safe is open. Dr. Evil, secure $1 million worth of counterfeit money in the helicopter. Cutting the red wire, disarm the C4 in the printing room on overkill or above. And basement dwellers, don't let the cops enter the printing room until the safe is open on overkill or above. We also got one secondary weapon, the China Puff Grenade Launcher. The GL40 would have been released with this DLC if it wasn't already in the game because it was introduced into Payday the Heist along with its Wolfpack DLC. So it's not surprising we have a replacement grenade launcher this time. It's a pump action and holds three in the magazine, landing itself between the GL40's 1 and the Piglet's 6. It reloads rather quickly and deals damage suitable for a weapon of this nature. Like all explosives, they do suffer when you're client with some noticeable desync. Instead of four melee weapons, we get one this time, the Pounder, a nail gun that deals 30 base damage and 80 charged. I'm putting this into the pile of useless melee weapons. It deals such a low amount of damage, it really isn't worth it. However, it is nice that when you swing it in the air, it's just a bashing animation, but if you hit a wall or an enemy, it'll actually look and sound like you're using it and firing nails into people. So I give props in that department. Can't go past those mask-making items we get with each DLC. Huns, the dragon head, the viking, and trickster demon are the masks. Houndstooth, Daze, Red Black, and Mushroom Cloud are the materials. Kerbits, Loose, Split, and Fenero, I probably butchered that, are the patterns. I like about 50% of all the new items, so that's actually pretty rare, I, cause I usually just hate on everything. I pretty much do this with every video now, but Simon of course delivers again, with remixes of the two songs from the original heist. Counterfeits Home Invasion 2016 and Undercover's Three Way Deal 2016. Simon always makes the music fit the game very, very well. In other news, the Offshore Casino is here to stay permanently. I remember back when it was first introduced, right before the first Infamy release, and everyone had wasted their money on it and then complained, Overkill tricked us! I don't have money for Infamy now! So, with safe house customization coming soon, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same thing. However, I don't think I could waste my 24.7 billion offshore. I mean, I would have to buy over one and a half thousand of the most expensive cards to waste it, or over 16 and a half thousand normal cards. Besides, I already own one of everything in the game. All legit, that's what will happen when you play for over 3,000 hours. I will give thanks to the tier 6 ghost skill Lucky Charm for my infamous drops back in the day. Overall this update was nice, especially for me since it was free, but that means we can expect the chains and a Hoxton pack sometime down the line, with the remakes of Heat Street, Panic Room, Greenbridge and Diamond Heist. Personally I want the Diamond Heist the most. But let me know what heist you most eagerly await, and I'll see you in the next video.